When we are born, we begin a process of preparation, readying for a day when we will go out and live. Once we have learned to breathe, eat, and clean ourselves, we begin our education. In America, children have always spent their lives in schools, but widespread college attendance is a more recent norm. In the pre-Civil War era, high school graduates were considered fully schooled and ready for life. Even Abraham Lincoln, one of our most revered and well-spoken presidents, had no interest in university study. Today, it would be unfathomable to elect a president who did not have, at the very least, a bachelor's degree. Flash forward to the 1970s. What was once seen as purely optional became a necessary preparation for a good life. College was an essential piece of the American dream. The U.S. government started offering low-interest loans to enable more and more people to attend college. To market these loans to the public, they founded the SLMA, Student Loan Marketing Association, now known as Sally May. This was the pinnacle era for American higher education. College was relatively inexpensive and loans were easy to obtain. But since then, demand, costs, and debt have increased. College tuition has consequently outpaced inflation and has risen in costs more than any other industry, including healthcare. It's risen so much that many schools cost triple what they did in 1970 in real dollars. In addition, teachers are paid less and have worse benefits while teaching more students. Recently, as costs have gone up, they've increased at a rate 13 times greater than money spent on instruction. As our nation's student debt passes $1 trillion, we've been forced to ask these questions. What is the purpose of these four to six more years of school? Are they really preparing us to live better after we graduate? Does it need to cost so much? We started to wonder if it might be possible for a college to better prepare students for life by both eliminating debt and improving the academic program. Thus began the Saxifrage School Project. The history of higher education in Western Pennsylvania has accounts of seminary students constructing their own one-room buildings that doubled as both classroom and dormitory. Other colleges saw no need to build their own facilities and just met in available public spaces like City Hall. This history offers a very stark comparison to the elaborate campuses of today. Inspired by this humble history, our concept is simple. The neighborhood should be the campus. Rather than the traditional college layout, classes will be held in underutilized spaces, in churches, museums, bars, and libraries. Instead of the usual program, we will offer a program in productive inquiry, where our students will balance their time between a major skill and a major study. They will learn both to make and design things, and to judge and communicate ideas, how to produce a thing of value, but also to inquire about that thing and question its value. As part of the program, we also want to reinvent the way we learn languages. Instead of studying for the requisite two semesters, learning only basic knowledge, every student and staff member of the Saxifrage School will study the Spanish language during the entirety of their time at the college. With this model, we hope that graduating students would have acquired a valuable skill, studied and inquired deeply and creatively, learned to speak Spanish, no debt whatsoever, done all of this in the context of a real neighborhood. It's a big, even crazy idea, but it's happening. No one else is doing it, so the work will continue in earnest. 50 teachers, 500 students, $5,000 yearly tuition. This is a proposal for a new sort of college that seeks to help students live better after they graduate. Can you imagine the Saxifrage School in your neighborhood?